It's been a while since I updated you guys on all of the new products that are coming out in the smart home industry. So strap in guys, there are a ton of new smart home products to tell you about today. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to take the frustration out of automation by keeping you up to date in the smart home industry. Let's start with the Galaxy Unpacked event that happened on February 11th. Now, I don't normally uh, cover a lot of the mobile content, but this was a bit different because the S20 came out and there's an S20, an S20 Plus and an S20 Ultra and the Ultra has incredible camera capabilities that I as a creator have to look seriously at despite owning a pixel 4 at this point it's it's really impressive stuff now on top of that the real reason to talk about it is it is the first sighting that we have of the galaxy home mini being available commercially to people now what happens is if you go and you uh, do a pre-order here you will get a galaxy home mini in some cases so you can have a look at that this is in korea only right now so so that's where the release is happening initially, but that's our first sighting of this product coming out. The other thing to talk about here is the IR base control within, within or on that Galaxy Home Mini. So this is a new component that we haven't talked about a lot on the channel, and it will have the ability to control some of your televisions through IR base control. So be very interesting to see what they'll do and then how that will connect in with SmartThings, their overall platform. Now Philips Hue has has a ton of new products I actually have to read out a few of these but they've really moved outdoors and then they're also looking at some low voltage uh, situations here so that you don't have a really complex installation and I think this is a really important thing for a lot of people you can't necessarily go and install lights all over your home and you don't necessarily have 120 or 220 volt uh, everywhere in your home so they have the appear the resonate the attract the Delo, and then the Niro after that if you want to head to the low voltage solutions you have the Empress the Lily and the Econic. Now you'll see release dates, lots of them in Europe well before North America and then you'll also see the pricing available for those on screen now. A couple of updates for the Philips Hue Sync Box. Now this is really interesting stuff. Number one, you're going to be able to change HDMI inputs on the sync box using the voice assistant. So that's Amazon, Google, and Apple's voice assistants will all be able to change your inputs. The other thing is if you have an IR based remote, the Hue Sync box is going to get an update right away here where you're able to actually change inputs on the Hue Sync box at the same time as you change it on your TV. Now that's really important because then it's one remote. You're not having to think about changing the HDMI signals on the Hue Sync box. It's all happening at once and that was a big gap initially for a lot of people. A couple of new features to tell you about within the Google and the Nest platform. Now Yeelight is one of the first vendors to have local SDK capability. Now I've been able to test this out a little bit and what I'll tell you is it's not quite there just yet but it has sped up the response on a Wi-Fi set of lights that I have here from Yee Light. Now, I have a strip light and I have a, a basic color light, and both of those have been given the capability to go local control. Now, Google still heads out with their Google Assistant to get this control done. It's still happening, so it's still taking a little bit of processing time there, but as soon as that triggers, or as soon as that command is back, those Wi-Fi lights are now as fast as Philips Hue, the Zigbee lights, and the other Z-Wave and Zigbee lights within my smart home. Turn off bedroom light. The other new feature to talk about is actually uh, around the Nest thermostats. Now this is very interesting to me because Google's been able to build a lot of data over time and I think this is going to be highly accurate. Now what they're able to do or what they're starting to roll out is actually the ability to diagnose 
upcoming HVAC issues. So this might be something that you see a notification off of. You're going to be able to actually get those notifications and then you'll get recommendations for who to contact or how to get help or maybe how long you have here with your existing HVAC. But it's going to warn you before the issue happens and you're left in the cold. Wise look to be having a little bit of struggle here with the launch of the Wise Lock, but they managed to get all their pre-order uh, devices sent out and then they're also sending out some demo units. We're going to get one up here sent up from the US up to Canada, so it's going to be a bit of a delay for us to review that device. But probably by that time here, or at least within February, you're going to see the Wise Lock go on sale. So that's the expected timeline. It's within this February time frame. The Z-Wave Pavilion at CES 2020 was absolutely incredible. They had a ton of vendors and they had a ton of new products and things for us to look at but they're at a new conference right now as I record this video called ISE and there they've launched a few products or at least a few features as well with different vendors. Now the first one maybe the biggest from Z-Wave is this Home Center 3 from Fibaro and it looks to be another smart home hub and what's important to know about Fibaro is that they're actually part of a company called the Nice Company or I think it's called the Nice Group of companies and there's a few within that so all of the nice devices are going to work within that. Fabaro we know have a, has a great lineup of products especially if you're in the European uh, Union there. Now that hub of course it's going to have Z-Wave on it but it also has Zigbee Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity capability so very impressive there and the other thing that's kind of interesting about this is Kaspersky and that's an antivirus I don't even know if I'm saying it right but that antivirus company or security company has actually worked with Fibaro and the nice group of companies here to add some additional security measures into that hub. I've been following the Rumi device from IntelliThings for a little while because I see a lot of potential in this device and we're talking with IntelliThings about how we would approach a review or how we would work with them here on Automate Your Life but uh, right now what they're actually doing at this conference is they've rolled out some of their bigger and newer features so that's the Tizen 4.0 uh, Samsung watch upgrade so that means you don't have to walk around with your phone everywhere within your home but if you have your smartwatch on with that Tizen 4.0 OS or better then you're going to be able to utilize Rumi as per normal now the other thing that they've actually released is the ability with the voice assistants to know where people are in your home. So if you had multiple of these roomy devices in multiple rooms, you could actually know where someone is within your smart home. You could ask your voice assistant for their location. You might be surprised to hear just how fast and how many new products are coming out for Apple HomeKit. Now, Eve has a second generation smart home plug that they've put out. It's a $40 plug, so it's a little more expensive, which we're kind of used to with most of the home kit products, but it now will fit two on kind of your standard plug and it also does energy monitoring all through its Bluetooth connection. It appears as though the Eero and Eero Pro router will both get integration into Apple HomeKit and be one of the first Wi-Fi routers with that integration. Now, this was something that Apple released uh, or, or talked about back at WWDC, their developer conference uh, last year, actually. So it's been a little while that we've been waiting to see some of these devices, but it looks like Eero's about to do that. Now I had to grab my phone again because I have to read just a ton of new devices that Akara basically uh, let everyone know about without meaning to here basically in their application a ton of these have shown up now they have a whole T1 series of new sensors so there's a temperature humidity sensor a motion sensor a contact sensor a light sensor and a water leak sensor now they also have a 220 volt air conditioning controller smart plug so it's called the p3 right now but none of these names are necessarily real the smart camera called the g2h two new door locks from them and a curtain controller or a and or a roller shade controller so a couple of different controllers there for your uh, for your blinds or your shades 
and none of this has been uh, released officially but it looks like there's a whole new set coming and based on some recent contact uh, to us from Akara, I think a lot of this can be confirmed. Sangled here, or Sangled, or however we're gonna say it today, they had this old hub here, but they're putting out a new version that's going to be HomeKit compatible. Now, of course, that's Zigbee, and that connects to their Zigbee lighting systems. Now, Sangled also put out a 100 watt Wi-Fi connected smart bulb, a Wi-Fi connected light strip update, so another one of those, and a 1200 lumen floodlight, an outdoor floodlight that again Wi-Fi connected so they have the Zigbee products but they're putting out a ton of Wi-Fi connected bulbs as well that's it for this week guys but there is lots of smart home news that you're going to need to get caught up on we did Amazon Samsung in the last couple of weeks and they have big updates going on right now especially with that Samsung smart things platform so go ahead watch the latest smart home news otherwise guys thanks for watching and of course don't hate automate.